G'day, my name is Calvin Cummings and welcome to Interactive Music Theory. This is level one, lesson two out of 14 possible lessons. Uh, if you haven't already got the booklet, it is just in the description down below. Uh, there's also a puzzle, puzzle booklet there which kind of matches up to all of the content and stuff that we're doing here as well. So the whole concept of this is that we're going to be able to become really super familiar with what uh, music looks like compared to what we're able to hear with our ears. Okay, so within this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to be able to learn how the notes are placed within a treble stave or staff, which we had a look at last time there in lesson one. If you didn't catch that lesson, do, do come back and have a look at that. Uh, we're going to practice placing the notes on the treble stave or staff. We're going to learn about the lengths of notes, and within that we're going to learn about semi-briefs, we're going to learn about minims, and we're going to learn about crotchets. Now each of those goes for a certain amount of time. We're going to be able to figure out which one is which, so that we can actually make sense of where they all go. All right. Uh, the work of this is on page 6 and page 29 of the workbook, which, as I said, is in the description down below. If you haven't already printed yourself off a copy or been able to kind of have a look at that, uh, make sure you do so and be able to keep up with us on this. So, as I said, so we're gonna, there's the, the contents of this. We're going to have a look at the musical term, so a bit of a revision of that. We're going to check out the notes of the treble clef. There's going to be a little bit of a matching game to be able to uh, match the notes to their names so that we can kind of put you on the spot pretty much straight away. Uh, we're going to have a look at semi briefs, we're going to have a look at minims, we're going to have a look at crotchets, uh, we're going to add the missing note within a particular piece of music, we're going to have a look at the beat tree which is something which is quite common within musical theory to be able to figure out how these notes mathematically work with each other and there's a little bit of an oral test or an oral puzzle for us to be able to kind of work our way through before I get you to go do some uh, kind of extension puzzle crosswordy sort of stuff. So let's have a go. So first of all music is placed on five lines those are called a stave or a staff. Okay now within that um, the start of a piece of music you'd also have something which is known as a triple clef which has something which looks like that uh, which we had a bit of a practice with last time. Uh, music notes are placed on lines or on spaces and we, we spent qu quite a bit of time there in lesson one being able to make sure that if they're on the lines there's a little bit of a gap at the top and the bottom or if it's on the space it hits the line hit, at both at the top and the bottom and it fills that space and that kind of oval sort of shape, not circle but oval sort of shape. Uh, Music is divided into bars, which can also be called measures, and dividing those pieces of music there is vertical lines, and those things there are called bar lines. Okay, so that's revision of lesson one, pretty much. So, let's have a quick wee look. Now, here's my treble clef. Reminder that we're starting off with a G line, or that fourth line down from the bottom, we're working our way all the way through, and coming through there. All right, I didn't need to do that, but yeah, just giving you a quick concept of what that whole triple clef was all about. Now that note there, where that dot or where that oval happens to be, that there is representing a C note. Now that's on that line just beneath. Now because we're working our way up, there's a C, move to the space above, that gives us a D note. Now music and the alphabet work in tandem in this. So uh, as we go higher and higher and higher through our notes, we go from a C to a D, then subsequently an E, an F, notice how we're going space, line, space, and line. We go all the way up to a G. At that point there we, we sever ties, and we're like, okay, we're done with this, we're going to create a whole new, what's known as an octave, a set of eight notes. Now. What we don't see here is a couple of other notes which happen to be a little bit lower than that. But the next letter here, in this particular case here, is an A. We've got a B on that middle line. And we've got a C here. Now, the concept of this lesson here on page 6 of your workbooks is that we're going to get to a point there where we can try to memorise this particular task. So... If ever we see a dot which happens to be on this line beneath a treble clef, we have to remember that it's going to be a C. 
Uh, same with that being on the space just beneath, that's a D. That bottom line there, that's an E. That one in that space there is an F. Now that sounds like it's got to be a big challenge for a lot of people, but it's really not. Because what we've got is within this, and there's kind of a little bit of a quiz on page 6 to be able to get your way through, and I'll, I'll, I'll come back to this, is that each of these notes happens to have, well, oops, actually, I'll probably just describe it from this actually, happens to have a particular place. Now, if you happen to be doing just the notes which are in the space, so, for example, let's go just the ones in the space. So treble clef, boom, that's an, whoops, that's a spaced note here, space note here, space note here, and that fourth space there. Now that note is an F, this particular note is an A, that particular note there is a C, and that particular note there is an E. So if you uh, wanted to use this as a little bit of a guide, treble clef, if we're looking for just the notes on the space, if it's on that one there, it's an F, if it's on that one there, it's an A, that one there, it's a C, that one there, it's an E. So thinking of the word face, in regards to treble clef, there is a really good way to figure it your way out there. And you can already see that. There goes that F on that bottom space there, matches there. We've got that A, it's that second space there. We've got that C, it's that space there. And if we popped that last one, over here in that space there, that would be an E note. All right, now that's it when it comes to um, the spaces. Now there is a different one that comes with the lines. So let's do these ones here. So one, two, three, four, I wish I could draw straighter, but that's just the case. Um, so here goes, Here goes my treble clef, or oh, sorry, sorry, my treble clef on my stave or staff. So that bottom one there is E. Next one up there, because I know that I've got an F in that space, that's a G. The middle line there is a B. This line here creates a D. And that top line there is an F. Now, with this, every good boy, oops, deserves fruit. Okay, so E. On that bottom line, G, second bottom line, B, middle bottom line, oh sorry, middle line, D, second top line, and F, that top line there. Every good boy deserves fruit. So we've got a couple of ways that we can remember these notes. One, if it's in the space, face, F, A, C, E, we can put the bottom up. With these ones here on the line, every good boy deserves fruit, which is on the lines. So we're going to be able to work our way through on that one there. Okay, now I do re recommend, and I'm going to write it up, there is a game out there called, in fact I'm going to click here, a game called Staff Wars. Now the, the concept of this particular game here, if you've never played it, uh, and it's uh, like it's an Apple based game. So if you've got like a your iPhone, iPad, you know, something like that You'll be able to do it quite quite freely Is that it's kind of like Space Invaders. You've got this note which should travel down the stave here And you have to figure out exactly which particular note it happens to be if you get the note right boom you Keep accruing points uh, if you get it wrong, then you 
and you, you lose life. I think you lose three, you're, you're done. But the, the idea of it is that it gets you really, really super familiar with these notes here that happen to be on this treble clef. So you're able to figure out that that's a C, that's an F, that's a B, that's a C. So you're able to kind of identify where all these notes happen to work. So star fours on uh, any Apple based device. I know that Microsoft do have uh, some other ones there, but I'm not 100% sure of their exact titles. There are some online websites there which you can have a look at as well. But uh, if you do happen to have an Apple based device, Star Wars is definitely one that will be able to reinforce the notes on the triple clef for this. Uh, and also if it happens to be on the line, E, G, B, D, F. Every good boy deserves a free. Okay? So, knowing that, uh, every goods, that'll be a G. Uh, every, there we go, E. Uh, that's on a space, so that's the third space from there. So F, A, C. That's beneath that there. So as, a, as I pointed out on that previous page, that there is a middle C all ready to go. So make sure that you've got that, that. That's kind of one that you have to just lock in place. So that's a middle C. I'll do that one again. Oh, don't know what's happening here. Oi. <laughs> right, there we go. C. Um, not the best of C's. And then we got space and space. That's the second space, so that's going to be an A. Then we've got that top space, that's going to be the E. So F, A, C, E. We've got that bottom line there. Every good boy deserves fruit. So, E for every. Uh, we've got that bottom space there. So that's that F that we're after. And just beneath that. Now, notice how each of these is, you know, it goes from a line, then it goes to a space. Now, because that's an F on that space there, it's an E on that line. You just have to work your way back in the alphabet. E on that one there, it's, sorry, sorry, F on that one there, E on that one there, you go back to the one before it. In this particular case here, this is a D note. Okay, so you, and you can work that all the way through. So if, if you only knew that this is an A, you could work out all the other notes just from going line, space, line, space, line, space, all the way up, or line, space, or line, space, all the way down. Okay, so use that as your theory there because Every time you move up, you progress up another note. And likewise, you progress down a note if you're going descending onto those notes. Okay? So that's it in regards to where these notes happen to be. On page six, much like you being able to kind of locate where those notes happen to be, I also need you to draw your notes in. Now there's a couple of answers for these. Now, one of them, I'm just gonna move this down here. These ones here are some potential answers there for you. I'm not quite sure what you can clearly see from that. Uh, but that D there is on the second line from the top. So let's let's draw that in the top. So where's that D? Switch on the line from the whoops, we'll go back there. Line from the line from the top. But it's also, it could also be a lower version of that D, which could be in that space. So it could be either. Uh, we've got this A, they've got the A there on that space there, which is, yeah, I mean, that's valid. But it could also be on a higher note up here. Uh, we've got that E, every, that's on the line, not the space. Uh, but it could also be on that top line of face, from the spaces there, if it's a higher version of it. We've got G, happens to be here. And it could also be up here on that, just above that space there. Um, B, well, kind of, in, for, for what I've taught you there, could only really be on that particular space, so we need to make sure we've got it there. We've got C, it's just above B, so that's a bit of a given, but we also know that we've got a version which is down here as well, on the space just beneath. Uh, and then we've got this F, we know from the first space of that word face, that uh, that space there is going to be one of our locations, uh, but it could also be the note just above that E, so it could be on that line just above there. So what I've done here is I've played two different types 
of notes, which would work. Um, and to be honest, I could actually go higher on this, and I could even go low on this one. So, so there's like they do go high and they do go low because, as I said earlier on, they they work in octaves of eight notes. So, A all the way through the G, and then it carries on to either a higher ver higher version, uh, can't say that way, or a lower version which keeps going that way. All right. So that's all on page six. If you've got one of each of those uh, for each of those letters there, you're going to be in a good place there, and especially if you're able to recognise why it's there. So, let's have a quick wee decode. Based on that space, based on that space, that line there and that space there. So I'll give you a quick wee look here on page six. Have a look at those notes there. Uh, feel free to pause if you're wanting a little bit of time to be able to work your way through it. However, let's have a look. So F, A, C this time round. Uh, then we got that F, A of face. Uh, that's on a line. Now remember that the the we phrase that I got you to do for the line one was every e good g boy b d deserves uh, and then f fruit. So e g b d f every good boy deserves fruit. So in this case here, there's a second line every good boy deserves fruit. And then this last one, that's the last one out of uh, phase. So F, A, C, and E. So that first one, nice and simple. Whoa. Oops. Over here. So that first one is cage. Okay? Being able to make sure that we've got that in place. Let's have a look at the second one. So, it's the bottom space there. The space, so we're looking at the word face. Bottom line, F. Uh, it's the second space there of that one there, so F, A, so it's the second letter out of that word face. Now that there is on the line just above where it had C. Now if you're thinking alphabetically, what's the letter which comes after C? So it's just a little bit higher up, it's D. Now, so we can think of it from face perspective, we can think of it as line, 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 every good boy deserves, D, deserves. And then, we've got that first one there, on that line. So that second one, fade. Right, last set of notes. We're still working on treble clef here, on the treble clef notes. So in this particular case here, we're looking at one which is just beneath. I've already mentioned that that particular note there is a C note, okay? So we need to make sure that we're kind of familiar with that. That's what's known as a middle C, uh, which is probably kind of one of the the lowest points there where you'd be playing with your right hand. Not necessarily, but like it's it's kind of a bit of a kind of a marker between where your right hand and left hand work on a piano. Um, then we've got the second space here, which face F A. Then we've got F, there goes our first space, so and then we've got the last space there, so F A C E which means your last one is cafe, to be able to com completely translate these different notes. So we've got C-A-G-E, F-A-D-E, and that's a C, that's an A, that's an F, and that's an E. Okay, all well, this is on page six. Make sure that you've got a copy of that, and you've been able to kind of match that up to your notes there. And like, like more importantly, be able to make sense why those things are in their places. Right. Let's see what we can do with this particular game. Now, as I said, uh, because this is not a live stream video, we're kind of a little bit hampered in the fact that, well, I'm gonna be kind of just assuming that you guys are gonna know the right notes. So in this case here, what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to match up these notes with where the, the written note happens to be. So for example, if it's a C, it's gonna be looked like that, but equally we're gonna to have to look at where it happens to be on the treble clef. So for example, this one here, Five lines, it's on the space below. Now, I know for a fact, just from looking at that particular note, that because it's below that first line, every good boy deserves fruit. So it's before E, just before E. This note here is a D note, okay? So I'm just gonna quickly write just like a little D sort of symbol there. <laughs> it's kind of cheating a little bit, but you know, it is what it is. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and, out of all of these other cards, try and identify where that D is. 
just click randomly there. Well, that doesn't work, that's an E, so that's not gonna work there for us. Okay, so the concept there is we're trying to match these up. So, this one here, second space from, um, well, second space on this particular triple clef, so F, A, C, E. So, in this particular case here, this is an A. Let's have a Google click here. It's a high C. Well, that's definitely not gonna work for us anyway, so like, we can't count that. Right, that one there, it's on the line. What's known as a legend line, just underneath the stave. So that one there is what's known as a middle C. Or a regular middle C there, uh, G. Well, none of those help us at all. So hopefully we're able to have a little bit more success with these ones. Let's have a look at this one, D. Oh, right, okay, that one there I do know. So that D note and that note there are gonna work. So let's consider that a tick. So we've got one sorted, all right, boom, done. However, now we're gonna figure out this one, an F. Yeah, so the best of my knowledge, none of these here are an F note. So I'm just going to kind of work my way through there. It's a high G. Now, a high G is gonna be a note there which is going to be, you know how we had every good boy deserves fruit. So that fruit, that F on that top line is a high F. We're gonna be looking for a G which is gonna be sitting, sitting on just on top of the stave. Um, so that's a high G. It's an E, well that's not gonna help us. Um, so here we go, we've got a G. That's not a high G, so that's not gonna be any good. It's an F. And this is kind of where I really wish I was paying more attention to my memory again. All right, so we've got a high F. It's a E. High F, well, we can get rid of that one. Okay, so there we go. Boom. Whew. Okay, so, uh, middle C. Now, middle C, I think, was around here somewhere, wasn't it? So let's have a quick look up here. Uh, that's a G. So let's click on that one, maybe. Yep, there we go, there goes a middle C. It's on that ledger line just beneath. Here's a middle C, straight away. Now, when I do get to do live streaming videos with you guys, which will be around about lesson eight, I think, uh, we're going to be uh, having you guys on YouTube officially making all these decisions for me, which which could either be really, really good or, or really tragic, and I'm not 100% sure which. All right, here goes a uh, high G. Now, I know that we had a high G up here somewhere. Perfect. So, that one there is sorted. Um, this one here. Uh, there should be a line above that, but that there is a high C, which I think, again, we've already come across. No, it's not that. It's no. And is it that one? Nope. <laughs> oh, well. We're in a tricky place. Okay, so uh, now, now we're at the point there where if I was paying more attention, I'd be able to memorize exactly where all these things were. So we've got four of them gone anyway. So this is gonna make our life a little bit easier. So let's have a quick wee gander and see if we can try to get rid of these last ones. This, is, this one here, we're looking for an A. So that can either be on the second space from the bottom or it can be on a line just above, but I'm not expecting it's gonna be in the second space. Click on here, done. All right, so here we go, got that red one. Boom, sorted. Let's have a quick look at this one here. This is a B this time round. So, for the sake of this, let's go, oh, right beside it. B, done. Sweet, sorted. Turns out my memory is not as bad as what I thought. Okay. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got another four pairs to go here. Let's go that one there. That's a G. Uh, that's an E note, that one there. So I need to figure out where that E note is there. And that's the G written out there up there. So that's a C. That doesn't help me. And that's an F. Right, okay. Officially, we should be able to finish this game from here. So that's a G, that's a, that's a oh, C and E. Oh, oh my goodness. Already, already forgotten it. So G, boom, done. Okay, so sorted. Let's have a quick look at this one, which is a high C. Hmm, huh. can't remember. Now that's an F. It's a high C, done. Oh, 
Let's give Team B points for the sake of this. And here we go, we got, uh, that's an if. Was that an if? Sure was. Uh, which by default should mean that that is an E and that's an E. All right, ta-da! Only took us about six minutes, which is kind of tragic, but that's okay. We'll get better as time goes on. So, on page 29 of your music theory books, which are available down below if you haven't already been able to pick yourself up one, a semi-brief is a note that has four counts in it to be able to fill out that particular time signature. Okay, so this note, when it's played, one, two, three, four, so go to one, so it goes for four beats in total. Now, if we're going to draw this, what we tend to do is we go, oops, don't, backtrack that, don't, don't, all right, so on this particular one here, we'd make sure that one of those fits in there. Now, you'll notice that within this, we've got to pop that in the middle. The reason for that is because we've got four beats in this particular one for crotchet length beats. These semi briefs go for four beats, so they fill up the entire bunch. So we're basically just taking up the entire spot. So boom, right in the middle, right in the middle, right in the middle, right in the middle, or as close to as possible there on page 29. Now, minimum is half that. This is where maths comes into play. So minimum has a count which generally has two beats within our time signatures. Now when we draw these ones, they're kind of the same as before, except we can fit two of them instead of four. Now think of it. One, two, three, four. We've got four beats in this particular bar. Here's one and two, filled up by that first minimum. And here is three and four. Now notice that on this one here I had this particular one here going for four beats of the bar, the semi-brief. In this particular case, these minims here are going for two beats each. One, two, for the first one. In this particular here, three and four. So you need to make sure that you've got one, two, three, four. Now, depending on where they are, when we've got our five lines, our five, you know, five stave lines or staff lines, uh, if it happens to be on that middle line, what can sometimes also happen is we can have them going down. Which looks like this. Notice how of these ones, the line goes down on the left hand side, but it goes up on the right hand side there. So there is a bit of a difference. It's not like this. Oh, I'll just backtrack on this one here. It's not like this. It is a straight down line. Boom. Okay. So it's really important to be able to get that. Now, by being able to have that hollow note, uh, that oval sort of shape, and a line either going down on the left-hand side or up on the right-hand side, um, that, that's really important. It's gonna be able to tell us that it's a minimum and that it goes for two counts. All right. So we've had a look at the semi-brief, which goes for four. We've had a look at the minimum, which goes for two. By default, this one here, this crotchet, which is probably the most common out of the whole lot, goes for one beat. So when we've got these ones, this four beat measure, four crotchet beat measure is going to have four crotchet beats. One, oops, one, two, three, And notice with these how the line is again, much like the minims, is traveling up on the right hand side. If we happen to be in a particular part of the music where they're traveling down, they went down there. And I'm taking a lot of care and effort to make sure that these notes here are colored in. If they're not colored in, I would, consent, I would consider them to be known as minims, which means that the note should go for two beats. In this case here, we'll just color that one in. This one here, we've got one, two, three, four. I'll just connect that up a little more too, just it's, it's important to be able to keep it all looking good. 
So one beat, another beat, another beat, another beat. So here goes beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four, one, beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four, and finish off the second half then to be able to make sure you've done that. That is all on page 29, okay? So that's just the same as the stuff of the minims on page 29, and just the same as the semi-briefs. That's all on page 29. So semi-briefs is worth four, minims is worth two beats, so two of them can fit that space, and four of these individual beats, or these crotcher beats there, will be able to fill up one of these regular sorts of bars here. So, knowing that, what we're going to do here is we're going to be able to try and figure out what's going to be able to fill the space. This here is the essential part. Four crotcher beat length notes. So, at the moment we've got one crotcher beat, another crotcher beat, another crotcher beat, so here goes one, two, Three. Now, effectively, all we're doing is we're filling up the, puck, the the bucket to be able to make sure that this bar is complete. So we've got one out of four, two out of four, three out of four. To be able to fill this up, we need one more note, which means do we need a crotchet, minimum, semi-brief? In this particular case here, we need crotchet. It's a single note. We need one of those. Okay. So that there is going to be able to give us that fourth note here. Now that there is a minimum. Reminder from earlier on here on page 29. Minimums go for two beats. So, one, two. How much space does that give us? Well, we've still got to fill up three and four, so, which is two beats. So in this case here, we need to have another minimum to be able to fill that gap. So. Dot, 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 one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this bar here is already 100% full. It's got four of those crotcher beats in there, but we've got a blank space here. Now we need to fill this bar with something that's going to fill up four beats. Now, in order to do that, what we're going to have to do is to figure out exactly out of these is going to be crotcher, minimum, well, in this case here, it's going to be a semi brief. Okay, so in this case here, one, two, three, four, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, so I'll just drop these in here as well. Now, um, we got one, two beats from this minimum, we already know that from before. We know that a crotch beat only goes for one beat, so for the sake of this, I'm gonna fill up my third beat with that. Bit of space here to be able to make it a complete bar of four beats. In this case here, we need to have this crotch up beat in here, which means that we've now got a fourth beat to this one here. We've got beat one, beat two. Well, we're still missing beat three and beat four, so we still need to fill this up with two beats. In this case here, which one would we choose? Crotch it for one beat, minimum for two beats, semi-brief for four beats, and that's right. We're gonna, we're gonna, oh, and as it's obvious, we're gonna be dropping in this minimum here, which is gonna take up the place of that third beat and that fourth beat there. Uh, let's have a quick look at this next one, which is pretty similar. So beat one, beat two, we've got nothing for beat three and nothing for beat four. Uh, and just while we're in, I'm just gonna fill up this last few bit here. So beat one, beat two are done. We've got a space here for two notes. Well, we could put two crotchets, however, for the sake of this, we're just putting in one note for each of these. So the only one out of these ones here which should work is that minimum. And one of these here, which is going to last an entire bar's worth, four beats, is only gonna be semi-brief. Semi Roof is the only one that's going to be able to handle the gentle there. Right, so on page 29, your piece of music should match up to this. And note that I've been t uh, paying quite a bit of attention to be able to make sure that my notes, uh, the dots, and then we've got the notes, uh, the stems are going up there on the right hand side. Right, moving along, let's have a think about how this all works, mathematically how it works. So, this one here, Semi Roof. Uh, lasts for four beats, okay? 
Now this one here is called a minimum. We know this. Two beats here plus something equals four. On this particular case here, we've got another minimum. Two plus two equals four. Okay, two plus two, those two ones there, equal exactly that. Now this one here, crunch it, uh, equals one beat. One plus something equals two beats. Well, in this particular case, it's gonna be one plus one equals two bits. So I'm just going to take a copy of this and drop that down. Oh. Ooh. Okay. okay, so that crotch beat plus that crotch beat equals that. Uh, then we've got this one here, another crotch beat plus one. So one plus one equals two. That means that we've got another crotch beat resting here. So this is what's known as a beat tree. This effectively all it is saying is that these two here equal the same amount as one of those. These two here equal the same amount as one of those. So two crotchets equal a minim, two minims equal a semi-brief. Two ones equal two, two twos equal four. Okay, so this is just simple maths um, that you would have done um, really, really early in the piece. Right, time for a little bit of a listening test, okay? So find a blank piece of paper or something similar to that. And what we're going to do here is we're going to listen to some of these notes and we're going to figure out are they semi-briefs, are they minims, or are they crotchets. So do they last for four beats, two beats, or one beat. Alright, we're going to be able to tell the difference there. So that's an A, that's a B, and that's B a C. Okay. So, whoa, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Eight, and here's my ninth one here. I will play them for you twice. Uh, I might even play the first one like, yeah, three times just so you get kind of an idea of exactly how the whole thing kind of works. So, let's have a look at number one. Now by itself, that probably doesn't mean anything because you don't know whether that's a, a long note within a short piece of music or a short note within a long piece of music. But we'll have, have another go at that. Mm. Okay, so I've got my idea of what it might be. Here's number two. So that one there for a start is already not a semi-brief. That one there went for a long time. My gut feeling would be that that there might be a semi-brief. Let's have, have one more play. It is quite long, so it could be going for those four beats. Um, that first one, I don't know, does it go for one or does it go for two, let's figure out. Let's have a look at number three. White. Okay, number three one more time. Now let's have a quick look at our answers there for the first line. So what, number one again, number two. Number three. Okay. Now each one of those there is represented as either semi-brief, a minimum, or a crotchet. So let's figure out. So if, if you chose A, sorry, not A. If you chose for number one, minimum, for number one, you'd be correct this particular time around. Number two, if you chose a semi-brief, that really, really long four beat based one, then you'd be correct there. If you chose for number three, well that short note, so that must be that crotch of there, then you're on the right track. Okay, so you get the essence of it now. Let's have a look at four through to six. Let's see what we do here. Okay, number four again. Here's number five. I think we've got that one. Number five, one more time though. And here's number six. And number six, just one more time. 
All right, now have a look at your answers for this one here. If you chose B or minimum for number four, then you'd be absolutely correct. Well done. If you chose semi brief for number five, then you are well and truly on the right track. And you notice that this one here went quite quick. It's a short note, just one beat. There goes your crotch at, nice and quick. Right, seven through to nine. Here's your last chance to be able to kind of redeem yourself if you haven't been going so great, or if you have been doing really, really well, see if you can go for 100%. So here's number seven. I've got my hunch, but let's have to play one more time. Okay, here's number eight. Ooh, very, very quick there, number eight. Let's have another go at this one. Okay, and here is number nine. A little bit longer than eight, but not hugely long. One more time there on number nine. Right, so let's have a look at our answers. So here's the answer for number seven. Definitely a longer note, definitely goes for those four beats. It's, it, I mean, it's, it's undoubtedly semi brief this particular time around. Number eight, super quick. I couldn't think of it being anything other than a, other than a crotchet, unless I was gonna start talking about some other notes, which are gonna be further down the line, which are, are like shorter again. And this particular one here, number nine, two beats worth this particular time around. So semi brief, Crotchet, minimum. Four beats, one beat, two beats. Okay, makes sense. So, uh, to finish it off today, uh, what I want you to be able to do is to have a look at your kind of, so some of the words that have been able to come, become familiar. So, which word can help you remember the names of notes appearing in the spaces of a triple clef? Well, I've already given that to you a few times. So this is the spaces. So we're looking for, so across would be the word, well, F, F, A, C, and E. And then let's go down to, say, number two down. A treble something appears at the start of a lot of pieces of music. Well, we'll be talking about that treble cliff that we ended up having a bit of a playthrough as well. Oops, number two down. Yeah, okay, so that does make sense. All right, so have we go through that puzzle? The answers I will reveal in about five seconds on this, so don't go too too crazy on this, but have a bit of a playthrough. Try to solve it yourself before you uh, move on. Uh, but effectively, that is the end of lesson two out of these 14 lessons here, giving you an interactive uh, music theory of level one. Okay, so here goes your answers. Uh, whoop, hold on. Oh, word. Yeah, so face should be up there, so that's my fault. On that one there, so I'll erase that, so, whoops. So, in this particular case here, uh, so face, clear for all the rest of it, it does work itself out. So, uh, congratulations on being able to reach the end of lesson two out of these 14 lessons. Uh, we will be progressing through and being able to find out a lot more about how music looks uh, in its written form. But otherwise, uh, keep working through all of the work within your work booklet, and I look forward to catching up with you next time. Cheers. Bye.